Welcome to this first pattern now in the design patterns part of this module. Uh, and the pattern we talk about here is the so-called observer pattern. The idea is that you might have a subject, you have some part uh, that you want to display in a certain way, uh, and you want to decouple the subject itself from uh, for example, the display or the behavior. So common cases uh, where you have this is, for example, a data object that you want to display and if the data changes, you want to update the display. Or, for example, listeners that you have in many programming languages, you have a button uh, and the behavior when you press the button is a different part. So these are common things that, so that you can evolve them separately and you can dynamically uh, add, for example, multiple displays for the same data or multiple uh, behaviors, multiple listeners for the same button. Uh, if you're not familiar with it or if you have forgotten it, I would really recommend you to uh, take another look at the uh, class diagram syntax because we'll use that a lot here. In particular, the object-oriented design patterns that we're going through all make heavy use of inheritance uh, and things like polymorphism that depending on if you call the concrete object the inherited subtype, then uh, depending on the language you actually call uh, the update function down here instead of the original one in the uh, higher class, in the parent class. So this is a behavioral pattern, the, the observer pattern. I'll just walk you through what this means. We have a subject um, that supports attaching and detaching observers. So you can at runtime call this method and say, I am an observer. I would like to attach myself to this subject. Um, and then the observer itself has an update method. So this is how you tell the observer something has changed. Now imagine the subject changes, for example, the, the data changes, you do something in the database. What happens then is that you call the notify method of the subject uh, and the notify method of the subject goes through a list of all the observers and for each of these observers it basically calls the update method. Uh, so by calling notify all of these update methods are called. Um, and if you call detach again, the, the subject simply removes the observer from the list of existing uh, observers. Now, uh, that's sort of the higher level here. Then you have the concrete uh, observer and the concrete subject, and they actually need to know each other. So for example, if you implement a button, then you have a button listener that knows exactly what kind of state the, the concrete class has. Uh, if you implement some kind of data structure, then this information is here. How does the data structure look like? And the observer needs to know that uh, because if you want to, for example, let's say you display a bar chart or a pie chart of that data, for that you need to know how the data looks like. So that's why we have this line in between here. The concrete classes know each other. Uh, so what happens if I call notify? Uh, the update method here is called and the concrete implementation of the uh, observer uh, then calls the concrete get state function. So basically we tell the observer something has changed and the concrete one says, okay, I know what kind of subject I'm dealing with. Uh, I'll call the get state method and I get back the current state. So imagine now this is, for example, election data. Uh, our concrete class is some kind of implementation of this data structure, states, parties, votes, uh, and we have an observer that displays this as a bar chart, as you often have. Uh, once we call the notify, the update one here is called of our bar chart. The bar chart knows exactly how the data looks like, so it calls the get state method, and the get state method returns the state, which is the concrete data structure uh, with the polling information. And then the observer updates the display. Uh, as I said, this is common, for example, for button listeners. So uh, for any kind of listeners, actually event listeners and programs. So for example, here you would have a generic class button and you would have a generic class listener. Uh, and down here you would have a concrete implementation of the button and a concrete implementation of the button listener, listener, which is, for example, the case in Java, uh, where you can do these kind of things. So that's one common implementation of the uh, observer pattern in practice that you might come across. Uh, in terms of the solid principles, what we see here is on the one hand the, the open-closed principle. So these 
two uh, parent classes are not made to be modified, they're kind of fixed. Uh, so they're closed for modification, but they're open for extension. So the idea is that you add uh, things on top of them. That's the open close principle in practice, basically. And the other thing we have here is uh, Liskov substitution. So uh, the abstract type subject and observer we can at any time replace with concrete implementations and the behavior should remain the same. So that's Liskov substitution. Okay, let's look into another one. Uh, this was the first behavior pattern.